Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, as promised, Digital Foundry did a Scorpio spec reveal today. Now, as usual, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys can click on the article for yourself. Now, Digital Foundry released a couple videos on YouTube on separate channels. So if you go to their Digital Foundry YouTube channel, there'll be a video there, and there is a different video over at their Eurogamer YouTube channel. So like I said, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you guys don't miss any of the Scorpio news that was released today. Now, Digital Foundry said the console is around six to seven months away and that's what we expected we expect an october november release date for the console now scorpio will be using an evolved jaguar core cpu clocked at 2.3 gigahertz with 4 megabytes of l2 cache now the regular xbox one jaguar is clocked at 1.75 gigahertz so that's an increase of 31 percent now, to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with the Jaguar cores, but I am glad that they beefed it up, even though Ryzen is what I really wanted. Now, Digital Foundry said it's very optimized with coherency and very, very low latency in mind. And then they dropped a bomb. The command processor, which takes the instructions from the CPU to the GPU and processes them, Microsoft engineers have integrated into that same command processor a DirectX 12 hardware implementation. Now, Digital Foundry says because of this, draw calls on the GPU that typically need thousands of instructions are reduced to just 11. That is incredible. Not even Ryzen has this, so this Jaguar custom CPU is definitely one of a kind. I have to say this is very impressive and to me negates the fact that Ryzen is not used as the DX12 hardware that Microsoft built in handles thousands of draw calls with just 11 instructions. Now, this CPU is nowhere near a regular Jaguar. This is a Super Jaguar. This is a Jaguar on steroids. Now, Digital Foundry said this will cut CPU rendering in half with DX12 games such as Battlefield, Gears of War, and Forza. Now, the GPU is 6 teraflops, and Scorpio has 40 compute units clocked at 1172 megahertz. Now, in comparison, the PS4 Pro has just 36 compute units clocked at 911 megahertz, and the anemic Xbox One just has 12 compute units at 853 megahertz. Now, when I look at this Xbox One spec here, it truly is amazing what they were able to get out of that system. Now the GPU is Polaris, not Vega as we hoped, but it is custom. Now the regular RX 40 has less compute units with 36 compute units and a core clock of 1120 megahertz. Now Scorpio, like I said before, has 40 compute units and it's clocked at a whopping 1172 megahertz. Now these are insane clocks for a console and the fact that it's higher than the base clock of the RX 480 is impressive. Now Project Scorpio is also going to have a higher bandwidth with a 30 384 bit bus and 326 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. Now Scorpio is no slouch and its GPU is actually better than the RX 480. Now Digital Foundry was impressed. They said that the cooling in the system is hardcore and that they've never seen anything like this before. Now they also said Xbox One games will run better on Scorpio without a patch. They also said screen tearing will be completely removed on Xbox One games. They also mentioned that texture text filtering would be much better with the 16 times option being used. Now they reported that Forza was shown running on Scorpio at a native 4K 60 frames per second and that the GPU usage was at 66% which means there's a lot of overhead left. They can use this to increase graphic fidelity for effects or whatever else they choose to uh, calculate more cars on the screen. Now in the video that I'm linking down below Richard says that Microsoft turned PC Ultra Graphics on with this demo and the GPU usage went up to 80 percent but it was still locked at 4k 60 frames per second now this is impressive a lot of people were saying oh no project scorpio is not going to be able to do 4k uh, ultra graphics at 30 frames per second much less 60 frames per second well right here we have confirmation that it was running forza at 4k 60 frames per second pc ultra settings now he also mentioned that quicker loading times will be had uh, on the uh, project scorpio over the regular xbox due to 31 percent um up you know uh, better performance on the CPU. Now, of course, the hardware bandwidth is 50% wider than the regular Xbox, and he says games will run at 4K Ultra 30 frames per second. Now, backward compatible games will run better, and 4K textures will also load very quickly on Project Scorpio. Now, the system will have 
12 gigabytes of RAM, eight are for the uh, games, Four is for the system, so for the uh, for the OS. So uh, in, in comparison, um, the Xbox One S was unable to run the uh, UI at 4K because it just didn't have enough RAM. Now Project Scorpio will be able to run everything at 4K. Now I gotta say, Scorpio will have a 43% compute advantage over the PS4 Pro. Games will look better. A 4K 60 frames per second recording option is included and they're using the new Havoc um, encoding, which will give you much cleaner uh, captures for your games. Now, I gotta say, a lot of YouTube uh, content creators are gonna love this. Uh, 4K 60 frames per second with Havoc, so you know they're gonna have the good compression um, algorithms. They're gonna be able to upload it to YouTube with fantastic quality. Now, he also went on to note that PS4 has a less capable boost system, that all Scorpio games will have a resolution performance mode, and it must be available to all users regardless of the resolution so you're basically gonna have uh, 4k super sampled down to 1080p sets now some people mentioned about sparse rendering now the sparse rendering might be for 60 frames per second so say they want to add more effects to the game they can always enable the uh, sparse rendering so you can have a higher graphic fidelity more effects more things on the screen or perhaps you just want to increase the frame rate I guess as we get closer to the reveal and as uh, some games come out I guess will know more about this but the gist of it is here is that games will run native 4k 30 frames per second we even have a 4k 60 frames per second ultra confirmation of a game running on project scorpio so for those who are saying it's just like the ps4 pro no it's not yes it's using a jaguar core but it is on steroids with dx12 built into the hardware scorpio will be better it will have the better versions of multiplats it has a 43 percent more compute power advantage over the ps4 pro but don't take my word for it i'm going to leave you with this clip here from richard um, ledbetter and in this clip he reiterates the point on why project scorpio is going to be better so like i said i'm going to leave you guys with this um sound clip here i ask you guys to like share and subscribe to the channel and i really want to know what your guys thoughts are i want to know what your guys thoughts are on the jaguar cpu on the dx12 hardware implementation into the in, in, into the um command processors um, I want to know what you guys think the price is going to be. Please leave all your comments down below. And if you found this video helpful or you liked it, was entertaining, please hit the like button as it really helps my channel. So without further ado, I'm going to leave you with the clip here and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Microsoft Redmond to, uh, to find out all about it, is that right? That is correct. Yeah, I was invited to see the new console, you know, a good six, seven months before it's going to be out. And yeah, impressive stuff. Cool. Well, I think the big question everyone wants to know, the, the big question I want to know mm. is, is Scorpio going to be better than the PS4 Pro? Well, almost certainly, yes. All right. Well, thank you very much. for Now, Ollie wasn't happy with the amount of detail I went into there. So if you could please tell us exactly why you think the uh, Scorpio is going to be better than the PS4 Pro. Uh, well, to be clear, it's going to be more expensive because it's putting in more technology into the box. So yeah, obviously in terms of like the core sort of computational power of the machine, yeah, it's, it's going to be better. So example, uh, CPU wise, uh, it's got a new custom CPU core uh, built on the same sort of technology that we've seen before, but it's faster. 2.3 gigahertz there versus 2.1 gigahertz in the PS4 Pro. Uh, GPU, uh, six teraflops confirmed there uh, versus 4.2 in the Pro. Um, memory bandwidth, which sort of keeps everything fed with data, 218 gigabytes per second on PS4 Pro, 326 on the Scorpio. So yeah, you know, I think it's going to be a case of, uh, well, you pay for what you get. Uh, I think, uh, you know, all of this is going to come at an extra cost. So you pay more, you get a more powerful console. Right, so in layman's terms, that means the graphics are going to be better, faster, it's going to be um, able to pull off more. Yeah, okay, so here's the thing. Um, the PS4 Pro has done a, actually done a really good job in terms of uh, scaling up 1080p games to work on 4K screen. Mm -hmm. Um, uses various sort of techniques. Uh, sometimes it just upscales from something like 1440p uh, to, to full 4K and it can look okay. Uh, there are a few native 4K games as well, FIFA and whatnot. Uh, but fundamentally, uh, Scorpio has more power. So it can do, 
it can do, well, it should be able to do everything that the PlayStation 4 Pro can do. Uh, so if it is going to use those um, upscaling techniques, then uh, you can expect smoother frame rates or uh, kind of richer visuals, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they can dial up the graphics settings, so to speak. But what Microsoft is kind of uh, wanting to sell to us is the concept that this is a true native 4K box, 8 million pixels displayed each frame. And uh, that's the kind of big sell that they're, they're, they're sort of uh, associating with this console. Okay, so what does this mean then for previous games that have released on the Xbox One. Is there going to be some kind of boost feature like we see on the PS4? Yeah, Pro? okay, so it's pretty much exactly like PlayStation 4 in terms of the core concept. So um, there will be games that get a patch that will exercise the full power of uh, Scorpio. So, you know, I don't know, just off the top of my head, I'd say there's a pretty good likelihood that Forza Horizon 3, for example, I mean, that game was built on PC uh, for 4K and, you know, they didn't do that work just for 4K PC owners. It will transfer across to Scorpio. So there will be patch titles just like we saw on PlayStation 4 Pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they should look pretty good. Now, when it comes to uh, existing Xbox One titles without a patch, now here's where things get interesting. Um, they are promising full backwards compatibility with every single Xbox One game and they're saying that they will look and run better. So yeah, pretty impressive stuff, pretty bold claim and they're going to do this in several ways. First of all, um, because there's uh, so much extra GPU power, um, it, all of it is going to get uh, dedicated to those Xbox One games. So dynamic resolution games, you know, if they sort of vary between, I don't know, 720p and 1080p, we can be pretty confident they will lock at 1080p. Uh, frame rates will be smoother, so you know if they don't hit 30 FPS or 60 FPS, they'll be smoother. Um, that, you know, probably hit the target. I mean, we've got four times the GPU power here, and uh, loading times will be faster uh, because the the CPU is faster. So when data comes in off the hard drive, uh, it can decompress quicker. And on top of that, the hard drive itself is faster because it needs to be. Uh, able to stream in 4K assets quicker. If it's not streaming 4K assets, everything will be quicker anyway, you know. And another thing is that um, the uh, Scorpio has more memory. Now, obviously, Xbox One games don't need it, but they've got like three gigs left over doing nothing, so they use it as a RAM disk, so data that won't even need to stream from the hard drive. You know, if it's been used before, it'll be in that cache, it can jump directly to it. So, you know, in theory, Loading time should be much faster, and they're going to improve texture filtering, so you sometimes in the distance you see kind of blurry textures on Xbox One. Those will be much sharper. So how do you think all this is going to um, affect the, the famous digital foundry frame rate tests? Normally, <laughs> the PS4 Pro has an edge. Um, yeah, I mean, well, in terms of base PlayStation 4 versus Xbox One, there's kind of like a similar differential in, in teraflops. Uh, it's 1.31 on Xbox, 1.84 on PS4, and so that's why we see uh, higher resolution and higher frame rates, typically on um, the PlayStation 4, or I, w I should say more consistent frame rates. It hits the target more consistently. And I think, you know, there's a strong likelihood that you'll see similar things on uh, PlayStation 4 Pro and Project Scorpio. Um, the other thing is going to be the visual aspect. I mean, it's got more memory. So um, all of these 4K textures that um, we see on PC games, uh, there's not really the room to, to, to keep them in memory on um, PS4 Pro because it's only got 8 gigs of memory. Um, the, Scorpio actually has 12 gigs of memory. Four gigs of that is kept aside for the system. Eight gigs of it is for uh, gaming. So yeah, I mean, three gigs extra over PS4 Pro, all of that will be used uh, on higher uh, resolution buffers and of course, better artwork.